Okay, so the next thing I want to do to actually create the surface is just to create a loft between all of these new polylines. For that, I'll do a loft component. And I'll just plug in all these polylines. And you can see the loft right now has an error. Um, and if you click on the error, it basically says insufficient valid profile curves. And this is happening for the same exact kind of data structure reason. Uh, again, if we show our data, what's happened because the polyline connected all of these branches separately, it's basically kept that branch structure. And now it has 10 branches with the polylines, uh, one polyline for each branch. And when it comes into here, Loft will try to do the same thing. It'll try to take all the curves in just one branch at a time and create these lofts. Uh, but because there's only one curve in each uh, branch, that's not enough information to create a loft. So in this case, what we want to do is actually get rid of this um, tree logic and basically flatten the tree so we have one list of all the curves and then loft can uh, loft between them. So again, here as a shortcut, we can just right click either on the output or the input of the loft, uh, just flatten that structure. And when we flatten, you can see that it's brought in a straight list of curves and now it's lofted between all those curves giving us the surface uh, that we want. All right, um, so the last thing I'll do is uh, show you how um, data structures and trees can help you in panelizing this surface that we created. Uh, and the strategy I'm gonna use here, uh, which is pretty common, is to first create a mesh representation of the surface and then convert each mesh face uh, in, back into individual surfaces. Okay, so the first thing I'll do in order to do this is I'm actually going to, uh, instead of using polylines, I'm going to convert these cross members into uh, splines. So this is another way of doing this. And the reason I'm going to do it is uh, if you use polylines, is the loft is going to give you a VREP, which is uh, actually a joined poly surface composed of two separate surfaces. So what I want here is actually one surface, and I can get that just by substituting instead of a polyline, um, this spline interpolate component. So instead of drawing polylines, uh, it works the same way. You just feed it in a uh, series of vertices. You can also specify the degree of curvature and a few other settings. And you see what's done is uh, pretty much the same thing, but instead of creating polylines through our points, it's created smooth curves. And these smooth curves, once lofted, are gonna create a single surface for me to work with. So here, I'll just replace it um, exactly into the same system and I'll just hide those polylines and now what I have is the same kind of loft but instead of a BREP or a compound surface it's giving me one untrimmed um, NURP surface which is what I want alright so once I have my single surface I can uh, convert it into a mesh and there's various ways of creating meshes from surfaces and they have each have various levels of control. Uh, the simplest way is just to plug in a surface into the mesh component. This will give you an approximation of the surface as a mesh but the problem with this is um, if you go to display and preview mesh edges this will show you the actual structure of those faces. You can see that it's doing a pretty good job at kind of um, subdividing the mesh to approximate the uh, detail of the surface, but it's giving us these kind of complicated uh, triangle shapes which we don't really want. So there's another component which will actually let you have more control over how the surface is uh, meshed. And this is pretty important for architectural purposes if we want control over that geometry, say if we want to use it for like a paneling or, or a facade system. Uh, and that component is mesh surface. Again, you type in mesh a mesh surface. You see there's a few more options because it's giving us more control over how it's converting. So if we plug in our surface into the S input, and just hide this one, uh, this has a series of inputs uh, allowing you to specify the resolution of the mesh in the U and the V. And this will always create a quadrilateral mesh. So each face is going to be a uh, rectangle and the resolution of this rectangle is specified by these two inputs. So here I'm just going to create a slider, an integer slider. I'm going to start at 10. I'm going to plug that into the U and the V 
components at the same time because I want the same parameter to basically drive the resolution in both directions. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly hide all this other geometry just to show you how this works. If I start to change this resolution, you can see that my mesh is becoming more and more coarse or more and more refined.